So what you read at the beginning was a quote from the official Shadow of the Colossus art book. It's indicative of the artwork and development process, but what interests me the most is its closing descriptor, a wondrous work. Now you can't get more pretentious than this, but I can't think of a more apt word to describe Shadow of the Colossus than wondrous. If we look at the word wonder and its definition, I find it very hard not to see how applicable it is and how accurately it functions as a one word review for this game. So to explain myself, in the beginning of any great story, the audience's curiosity should be piqued, and at the start of Shadow of the Colossus, it comes from the desire to know who these two people are and what they are doing in this peculiar land. Now, you can poke holes in my logic here by arguing the first sensation of wonder is the feeling of amazement and admiration caused by the beautiful establishment of this unfamiliar land. And where this is definitely a factor, I would argue it's quickly overshadowed by some of the best minimalistic world building and ambiguous storytelling in any video game's first act. Each question raised is answered succinctly and done so with enough ambiguity to create the illusion that there is a far rich depth to be discovered within this story and world. For example, the backstory of Wanda and Mono is vague. Dorman is only given the description of a being who can control the souls of the dead, and Dorman's warning, the price you pay may be heavy indeed for bringing Mono back to life, is left without an explanation. It is incredibly important to hook an audience early on. The desire to know the unknown incentivizes the gamer to progress. Not only does Shadow of the Colossus achieve this to great effect, the minimalistic world building and ambiguous storytelling complements this sense of wonder. And our curiosities are truly piqued. We want to know why this land is forbidden. What is Dorman? And what is the price to be paid? But most importantly, at the end of the opening, we are left with one completely unanswered question. Wander is told he must destroy 16 idols to fulfill his goal. The idols can only be destroyed by defeating the Colossi they represent. We are left wondering what the Colossi are like compared to their idols. For me, this was truly awe-inspiring, and the awe doesn't stop there. Each of the 16 colossi are unique in their design, both artistically and gameplay-wise. The escalation of spectacle, challenge and inventiveness between each colossus lends itself to the feeling of amazement and admiration. The battles themselves are designed to escalate the sensationalism of the moment by drastically changing the tone of the music for when you gain the upper hand. It's not only the in-battle effects which give these encounters such an epic feel, they are also aided by everything outside of the battle. We start with Dorman giving an intriguingly vague description of each new foe. Next, Wanda has to traverse the beautifully barren landscape to reach the Colossi's domain. This is crucial, because the length of time taken in travelling and the tone established serves to entrance the gamer into a state of peace and calm. So when you finally come face to face with your foe, the battle is made all the more remarkable. And once the peak of amazement and admiration is reached and we have conquered our foe, the reward we receive is an incredibly sorrowful one, which leads to the final sense of wonder. <laughs> Victory brings little gratification, the triumph is tinged with sadness, and Wanda is inescapably punished for ending the life of each colossus. The lamentation of these unfamiliar and beautiful creatures is a clear indication that the path to Wanda's goal isn't as black and white as it seems. 
To illustrate this, we are shown the effects of Wanda's decisions, but we are left in the dark as to their meaning. This puts a huge sense of doubt in our minds, and all of these different growing feelings of wonder culminate into an incredibly powerful final conflict, the 16th Colossus, Malus. sets the tone. This isn't a roaring battle of excitement, instead it's a beautifully sorrowful subversion of what a final boss should be, a mournful reflection on your actions. But within this fight there's also the irresistible desire to know what will happen once Malice falls. And the conflict is double-sided, Wanda's purpose is unwavering, we have to defeat Malice. But doubt is clearly seeded throughout Wanda's journey. Is killing the Colossi the right thing to do? This is why Shadow of the Colossus is so good. These different types of wonder aren't separate from each other. The design choices which inspire each different feeling of wonder bleed into one another in a complementary fashion which improves the overall experience. It is truly great game design and storytelling when you can be simultaneously enthralled, incentivized, and be so uncertain of your actions. So, this video isn't supposed to be a learned insight into a brilliant video game with the intention to astound you with knowledge that you didn't know. It's more of a recommendation for one of my favourite games of all time. If you haven't played Shadow of the Colossus, there is a hell of a lot more to it than my pretentious ramblings. It's well worth your time, I promise you. There's a reason this game is so fondly remembered by those who have played it. It's unique, masterfully crafted, and to me, it truly is a wondrous work.